Yes, uh, Honorable CS, it's a pleasure to meet you for the first time. I never engaged with you. And I would like to thank you for honoring the summons of the committee. Some of your members sometimes give us troubles coming here, and so I'm most honored for that. Now, I'd like to begin from your document, which you gave us. That's that your response, that's paragraph three, where you say this the proposal the proposed concession is anchored in the public private partnership act of 2021 that statement locates these proceedings in that act and my question is under that act do you have the locals to answer any questions who is the cabinet secretary anticipated under section 2 of that act that's my first question Secondly, I would like to reiterate what the chair stated in passing. Like it was a light, a light issue, but it's a fundamental issue that your documents are crafted in a language that says that the Adani deal is done. We will, we will, we shall, we will, we are. It's already concluded. I don't know why you are giving the impression that this deal is uh, I want now to take you a PPP works and I put it to you that you are trying to mislead the Senate this step 1 to step 20 and so forth is not how the PPP act works First of all, the PPP Act does not oust the Public Procurement and Asset Disposal Act, which provides for direct procurement, privately initiated proposals, restructuring, restricted bidding, and competitive bidding. You have told this committee in answer to Senator Ladema's question about those detailed sketches and what have you, that is the government which gave out that information to attract investors. I want to read for you a definition of the, in the law of what the PPP, or what a privately initiated a privately initiated proposal that's under section 2 of the act means a proposal that is originated by a private party without the involvement of a contracting authority and may include information that involves the complete evaluation of the proposal as if it were a bid what you are telling us is not does not conform to that standard and uh, I would require the minister to sections 40 41 43 and 44 of the PPP Act to underscore what I'm saying and I would also want to refer the minister to part 5 to part 7 of section 68 of the PPA Act 2021 on the establishment of the project company that states you have told us here that you are, you are negotiating that the CEO of that company should be a Kenyan under the law when you get to that stage what does the law say on the execution of a project agreement the project contracting authority and successful bidder shall establish a project company in accordance with the company's act so if you are at that stage, it means this deal has been concluded according to the law. Yes. And you are trying to run circles around this committee, which is not acceptable. I move on. Jomo Kenyatta International Airport is a going concern. Correct. 
And the objective you have given us here is to expand the airport. And therefore the project is initiated by Kenya Airports Authority and cannot be privately initiated. Thus the project cannot be procured under section 40, 41, 43 and 44 of the PPA Act. This particular contract, if that's the aim, should be procured through the section 46 to 63 of the, PPA, of the PPP Act. The use of privately initiated proposals here raises a red flag that all we are, we are, we are confronting us with is concealment of fraud. And this might be a major case of money laundering where a public project is being used to repatriate money that has been stolen from Kenya in the guise of developing the airport. I want to add on chair if you allow me some time. I spent a bit of time reading through the document. All right. So, the use of this PPP in the Adani case is fraudulent. The process does not meet the requirements of section 40, 41, 43, and 44 of the Act. And I just, just given time, I just want to, I'll jump through some of the things I wanted to say and just go to the key issues. I would like us to look, if you look at uh, section 40, Forty one, section forty one, I'll go to forty one, I'll jump forty, I'll go to section forty one. Yes. Forty one A has an express requirement that you have not fulfilled. It requires that the, co the directorate in coordination with the contracting authority shall before commencing an evaluation shall before commencing an evaluation you are telling us an evaluation is underway you are even doing due diligence but the law says before commencing an evaluation of a privately initiated proposal you shall conduct due diligence to confirm that the private party has not been debarred by any country or any international organization from participating in public private partnerships or similar arrangement is not corrupt has not engaged in acts of corruption and has not been sued or convicted on account of acts of corruption is a requirement of the law before you touch a thing they propose it is supposed to yeah, under same 41 you have to demonstrate that the, the, the group is tax compliant in all jurisdictions where it has operated or operates you go on and says the entity has not and its directors or officers have not been convicted of any criminal offense related to professional conduct within a period of five years preceding the submission of proposal and have not otherwise been disqualified pursuant to administrative suspension or debarment proceedings. So all these things that I mean that I have tried to highlight out, but just to leave it up because of time, I would have expected you before you, you began addressing this Honorable Senate, Committee of the Senate to first of all justify why it is you, a Minister for Transport, who is answering matters on PPP. The letter was addressed to Mr. Mudavadi. At that time, he was covering the entire cabinet. Who was the minister responsible who should be answering these questions? Is it you or the minister for finance? You are a stranger in these proceedings. The minister to answer these questions is the minister for finance, not you. You are not recognized in law. And so, secondly, I would have expected the answers to begin by showing that 
there was this due diligence carried out and the Adani was cleared before the government went further to begin looking at them. <laughs> Secondly, there's a requirement in the law that you must prove that public that competitive bidding could not if could not give us a bidder. It must be that Adani is bringing something so unique to them that you must go the PPP way. If, if competitive bidding can, be, can realize the same, pro, uh, same result, you are supposed to do competitive bidding. Where is the proof that only Adani can, has the technology or the int whatever to, to, to expand an airway the or the capacity? So you needed to justify that competitive bidding was ruled out. The default for public procurement is competitive bidding. So your initial suggestion that the PP, the public, uh, public, the public uh, procurement and asset disposal act was like sidestepped by the PPA is not true. The PPA is just stands on the public procurement act to advance its cause. So I put it to you that you are trying to scam us in your response. You have no standing to address this committee, and I would ask the chair to demand that the Minister for Finance, who is the, who is the entity recognized by law under the PPP, comes to address this committee on the questions we have asked. Thank you, Chair. Thank you I very much. Uh, before I give the CS the, the opportunity to respond, it's good to note that uh, the CS is properly before this committee. This is a committee of transportation. This is a committee that saw it fit to look into this issue of Adani because the pub is a matter of public interest. And we invited the CS to appear here to shed light. If we find the gaps, nothing stops this committee from inviting any other person. And probably you have seen some gaps. So nothing stops this committee from inviting anyone. But if you remember very well, maybe you are not in when I was making my opening remarks, I asked the CS he was supposed to be accompanied by the Director General, Public Private Partnership, who is Mr. Christopher Kiregua. Yeah. And I also asked that yesterday. So, and I said we are going to deal with that issue at the tail end because I didn't want to um, uh, chase the CS away because it's a matter of national interest. So this is uh, another character that we are going to discuss as a committee because we have invited uh, the Treasury. Uh, we had actually invited the PS for Treasury, but we are expecting the Director General of Public private partnership who is actually the one who is supposed to answer all these questions but the CS saw it fit to come before us because he understands our role as a committee and I should thank him for appearing here but having said that Bona CS uh, briefly because it was uh, Senator Omtata took us through the law and what the law says uh, I would want you to comment on the Senator Omtata's um, uh, remarks or contribution. I, I did not hear the question, uh, but uh, I would want to hear your comment on that. Uh, thank you, Chair, and thank you, Senator Omtata, for the question. Uh, as regarding uh, the due diligence that ought to have been done um, before commencing the exercise, my written response, response does say an initial uh, due diligence was done, Chair, so it was done. It is not true that it was not done. Uh, if you go to my uh, first page of my document, I did say in paragraph number three, starting with currently, we are processing through the stages outlined in the PPP framework. We are in the detailed due diligence phase while also negotiating the proposal submitted by Adani. An initial desktop due diligence was done by KAA and the PPP directorate before commencing the evaluation. Uh, so it was done. As regarding the procurement process, uh, I'm not a lawyer uh, uh, chairman like Omutata. 
I, I thought I thought he was sorry. Uh, uh, but I've just been referred very quickly to uh, section 42 of the PPP Act, uh, which does say the provision of the Public Procurement and Asset Disposal Act shall not apply to a public-private uh, partnership. So I don't know whether we are reading the same law, uh, the same act. And if you go quickly to uh, section, which other section was this we wanted to refer to? Section 40, 40 uh, which basically talks to a contracting authority may consider a privately initiated proposal submitted under subsection 1, uh, which is a private party may submit a privately initiated proposal to a, contract, a contracting authority. And the authority uh, may consider a privately proposal submitted um, accordingly. Uh, Chair, let me basically say for big infrastructural projects, like I've said earlier on, you basically as a country are seeking big investments. And um, it's one thing to market your country, to develop your infrastructure. Other countries like you, somebody said Ethiopia is developing 100,000 uh, passenger terminal. Uh, 100 million. Ethiopia, uh, Uganda, sorry, I've got some numbers here. Rwanda is just completing developing its uh, uh, airport that will have a capacity of uh, 1.3 uh, 14 million passengers at 1.3 billion. Um, just to talk to the issue of cost, uh, we, are, we are asked many times, why are we spending 1.8 when uh, Rwanda is spending 1.3? The capacity for Rwanda is 14. The capacity we are developing is 23. Ethiopia is developing 100 million passenger. But more importantly, look at the competitive uh, aspects of Kenya being that anchor state when we do enjoy the benefits of what I said earlier, job locationing with Mombasa port, uh, that we should not be competing with Ethiopia who do not have the benefit of having a seaport. And therefore, we need to ensure that by sea, by air, by road, we are competing. Uh, whereas our fiscal headroom cannot allow us to build a new airport, which we should have built some 15 years ago, um, a new airport. We need a new airport, and it is incumbent upon us to really suit investors. If, for example, we in, in my last trip to China, which is a China-Africa uh, uh, kind of uh, a, a forum on China-Africa cooperation, we are marketing a number of infrastructure uh, projects like roads, and we are saying, how do we open up our road to Malaba from Nairobi, from Mombasa, and so on and so forth. So uh, it, it, to be able to attract that kind of investment, Chair, you need to give investors information and to be able to make informed decision to come to Kenya and not to go to Ethiopia. Uh, let me rest. Uh, I don't know whether there is a very specific uh, question which I, did, I didn't basically address from... Maybe you can address that uh, Klaus again that you talked about uh, the PIPs are not subject to... I've just quickly been referred to... Um, Section 4.2, Chair, which does read the provision of the Public Procurement Act, Asset and Disposal Act 2015, shall not apply to a public-private partnership. So we basically have to prosecute uh, the privately initiated um, a proposal in line with the PPP Act. I think the biggest challenge, Chair, we are facing is that we have not really employed often the PPP Act or not many projects have succeeded through the PPP uh, procurement uh, process. And then therefore, the, some of the challenges we are facing uh, because of non-disclosure, there's a lot of negotiation in the process, is lack of information. And in Section 40, two of the same PPP Act, it does read a contracting authority may consider a privately initiated submitted 
under this uh, under, under under one, which is a privately party may submit a privately initiated proposal to a contracting authority, and that is what Adani did. Thank you. Okay, and when you're there, uh, just go to 41. No, no, the same, the same um, section, 43J, that states the privately initiated proposal under subsection 1 shall contain the following information. J states a justification why the project is not suitable for open competitive procurement. Yes. I think on that one, that's why, uh, that, that's, that's, that's the area. That's why we feel that Adani's proposal is the only proposal that we should go uh, out with. Why not for competitiveness, say we have one proposal, but before we consider this, we are going to invite any other person out there who would want to come up with their own proposals. Uh, Chair, um, I'm advised to be satisfied ourselves that uh, there, is, there was good justification why the project could not be suitable for open competitive. Uh, I think uh, you're talking about the kind of investment we are, we are looking at. Uh, uh, the investors who look at various aspects of uh, investing in various destinations. And uh, yes, I think we can give that justification why we uh, think the project or why we, satisfied, order, why we satisfied ourselves that the project was not suitable for open competitive point of order chair and and that's why we're still insisting uh, this mr christopher kiregua the director general of public private partnership should be here uh, i don't know whether it's before maybe the end of this session you should have him here I know. Okay. So if you can contact him, but I have a Senator Sefuna. Yes. Chair, sure. you, you remember me asking this, yes, when the policy of government changed. It must have been at that point where he 